So it's been a while since I last made a video, but to make it up to you guys, I got permission from the Celeste devs to release this project, so long as I release it for free. So you get a free game, and I get a free subscribe. Thanks. To start this project off, I decided to create a model for Madeline. The first model is always the hardest, since I have to figure out how to translate the model from 2D to 3D. Then once I have the base model, I can play around with some of the parts, like the arms or the head, and then edit a few things to make the other animation frames. This character had the most detailed animations in all of the 3D remakes I've done so far. The run cycle alone I had to model had 12 different frames for the character. To put that in perspective, all of the other characters that I've modeled until now have had 3 frame walk cycles. Something new that I had to do in this game as well was add an idle animation. When she stops moving, Madeline will play an idle animation, which ends up looking a whole lot better than her just staying there t-posing or something. And with both of these animations finished, I can start moving them into Unity. After adding on the character controller asset that I always use, and attaching a Cinemachine camera, Madeline can start to move around. Then I wrote another script that uses a timer to update her mesh with another frame from the animation. If she's standing still, she'll be in the idle animation, and if she's moving, she'll be in the run animation. The next thing I added was her jump animation. While working on this animation, I also noticed that they made Madeline squish down a bit and then grow bigger than she normally would before returning to normal. This makes the animation look a whole lot more interesting than just having her jump up naturally. It's basically the same concept I've been using when editing videos. Sometimes I'll make something pop up on screen like this, but making it grow and shrink rapidly, which ends up looking a whole lot better than just having it appear like this. After applying this technique to Madeline, her jump is now complete, and at this point, it was time to add one of the game's main mechanics, which is her dash. This is a tricky mechanic to translate to 3D because of the fact that Madeline can aim her dash in any direction. The only way that I thought to do this was to make her dash in the direction that the camera is facing. This works really well, except for when you want to dash straight up. It's kind of hard to see where you're going because the floor can block your vision. When Madeline dashes, her hair also changes color from red to blue. This indicates to the player that they already dashed, and they have to touch the ground again to reset it. There's also a short period of time after touching the ground that her hair turns white before turning back to red. After adding that in, the dash is starting to look a whole lot better, but it's still not done yet. She also leaves behind this phantom trail that quickly fades away. For this, I just made a prefab of Madeline with a transparent material that quickly changes the opacity over time. After a second or so, the model also destroys itself, so this way there's not a million invisible Madelines haunting the scene. And the last basic mechanic that Madeline has is climbing. Madeline can grab onto walls and climb up or down, but she can only do this for a short period of time before becoming tired and letting go. When she becomes tired, she starts to flash red. I made the climbing and the flashing red mechanics, but I also had to figure out exactly how the stamina system worked. Luckily, this guy in red had a very detailed post describing how the stamina system works. After implementing it into my version of the game, I think it works really well. However, even though climbing and climb jumping consume stamina, wall jumping and wall sliding do not. So even if Madeline is flashing red, she's still able to slide down walls or jump off of them. And with the basic movement in the game now finished, I decided to add a bit of early polish to it. I finally started getting a better understanding of Unity's particle system. I still can't create anything from scratch, but I can edit a pre-existing asset and then change it to look the way that I want it to. By doing this, I create a smoke cloud for when Madeline jumps and lands, smoke trails for when she's sliding down a wall, and this little steam effect for when she's climbing to show that she's struggling. And then I also figured out how to finally add an outline to these voxel characters. This is something that I've been struggling with even in my own game that I've been developing. When you try to add an outline to these models, the hard edges in voxel and low poly models makes it work incorrectly, but you can see that it works fine for something rounded like a sphere. I've tried using different assets to fix the problem, both paid and free, but never found anything that worked. But during some random experimentation one day, I combined aspects from two different assets and got it to work somehow. The Tuni Colors Pro 2 asset has a smooth normals generator, which is supposed to create a mesh without those hard edges, but using the outline shader from Tuni Colors Pro 2 still doesn't work even after smoothing the normals. But then I randomly decided to try using this free outline shader on the smooth normals mesh, and for some reason that worked. It even lets me add more than one outline at once, just like the style of my thumbnails. The last bit of polish that I needed to add to the character at this point was creating the hair physics. I was looking around and found a reddit post questioning how it was made, and the actual person who developed the feature in the game responded. I also found this other guy who made a Unity tutorial based on the response, so it was easy for me to convert the solution from 2D to 3D. Basically, you just need to make a couple of gradually smaller spheres and have them linked together like chain links. The hair pieces follow each other and are all linked back to one anchor point on Madeline's head. And just a fun fact that I didn't know until this point, but Madeline was apparently drawn without hair in the game, and the hair was all added afterwards using this technique. The only thing that I really changed was that I made her hair go behind her a bit when she's climbing, so it looks like her hair is draped on top of her bag instead of going through her body. Having played through the entirety of Celeste myself, I know that there's a lot of advanced mechanics that the game has to offer, some of which are even taught in some short tutorial videos later in the game. 
The only ones I'm familiar with are the wave dashes and the wall bounces. Some of these other ones look so crazy that I don't even know what's happening. I was able to add the wave dash by making the character dash diagonally downwards towards the ground, and then jumping within a short period after landing. This only works because I track the height at which the character starts to dash, and then the height at which they become grounded again, as well as tracking the angle of the camera when the dash was initiated. The timing for the jump, as well as the angles and heights required, are pretty generous compared to the 2D version, because I feel like it might be harder to land consistently otherwise. As for the wall bounce, I decided against including this mechanic because it requires you to dash straight up and jump off the wall. And as I mentioned earlier, dashing straight up in this game is pretty tricky, and I ended up having to remove any obstacles overhead anyways when modeling the level, which I'll get to in a bit, but because of this I decided not to include the wall bounce. Now with that said, the character controller is finally finished, and it's time to move on to something else. One of the things that Celeste has to offer for completionists are these strawberry collectibles. They're usually hidden away behind some challenge, so collecting a strawberry is like a medal of honor for completing that challenge. I only had to create one model for the strawberry, and then I created the movement by making it move up and down in a loop, and also rotating it. I thought that having a smooth movement and rotation would look weird in a voxel style game, so I made it move and rotate in steps based on a timer. I tried experimenting by adding a point light to it, since the strawberries in the game are illuminated, and it ended up looking pretty good in the final level, but not so much in the testing area that I created. After that, I had to create a way for Madeline to collect them. I started by making it so that if she touches a strawberry, it'll start to follow behind her. In the game, if you grab a strawberry, it'll start to follow you until you're somewhere that you can safely collect it. You can also collect more than one strawberry at once, which leads to a train of strawberries following Madeline. Adding this was similar to adding the hair mechanics. The first strawberry Madeline grabs will start to follow her, and then the next will follow the first strawberry, and then so on. And seeing the end result in game made me really happy. I thought it was really cool seeing this feature working, but now I needed a way to actually collect them. I made trigger zones on the ground to determine when it's safe for Madeline to collect the strawberry. Green is safe, and red is unsafe. Grabbing a strawberry in the red will just add it to the collection, but walking over to the green will actually collect it. I also made it so that the strawberry has to catch up with the player first before being collected, even while it's safe, to make strawberry trains like this possible. And the last thing to add for the strawberries is the points for collecting it. Collecting a strawberry will show that you've earned a thousand points, and this number increases with each strawberry collected. Starting from the sixth strawberry collected at once, the game will start to reward you with 1-ups. As far as I know, these points and 1-ups are meaningless since you have infinite lives and there's no scoreboard. I'm pretty sure they're entirely visual, which is exactly how I made them in my version as well. After the strawberries, I started to work on these dash crystals. These crystals will reset Madeline's dash mid-air if you jump into them, and after a short period of time they also respawn. For starters, I had to create a model for the crystal. Then I had to create a couple different versions so that I could recreate the animation that plays on it. The material I used for this is also slightly different from normal because I wanted to make it look like the crystal was glowing. Then I used the same script that I used for the strawberry and applied it to the dash crystal as well. It let me reuse the movement of the strawberry as well as the trigger for colliding with it. I just had to make sure to change the fact that it won't be collected like a strawberry. Instead, I had to make it so that it temporarily disappears, leaving behind a white outline of where it will respawn, as well as resetting Madeline's dash. I also added some visual effects to make it look better when grabbing it and when it respawns as well as when it's just sitting there idly. With all of this, I now had enough material to start working on creating some levels. I found a website called Berry Camp that has high quality renders of all the maps in the game, as well as spawn locations for things like strawberries. Using this, I brought over some maps into Unity. My first attempt at making the levels didn't go very well. I did what I usually do and basically traced over the level using Pro Builder and created an outline for the first room. I applied a texture to it and it was looking fairly promising. Then I did a test where I would just extend the mesh outwards to make it wider, like I did with my Mario remake. I ignored the fact that the texture looked weird on the inside for now, and decided to try playing around in it, and it was terrible. The room was way too small to work properly in a 3D environment. Even if I created a camera collider so that the camera would pull in towards Madeline when she was occluded behind some geometry, it was still too cramped to be able to tell what was going on. I decided that I was going to have to redesign the levels to work better in a 3D space. This meant that the ceilings were going to have to be removed, and tight spaces like this weren't going to work. Because of this, I had to entirely remove some of the side rooms because it would have been way too easy to cheese it by jumping around instead of doing the challenges properly. So I just modeled the main path of 1-1 from start to finish, and ended it off with the ending screen of the Forsaken City with the giant gravestone. Along the way, I added some 90 degree turns at the end of the room so that the path wasn't completely linear the whole way through. And I'll say right now that I think the environment art is definitely my weakest point in this remake, mainly because I'm not very good at texturing, but at the very least I can say that my texturing is on par with some of the latest that AAA games have to offer for multi-billion dollar companies. After finishing the modeling and texturing for the levels, I wanted to make a new skybox to get rid of the default Unity skybox. I took one of the screens with the most empty space and made it into a rectangle. Then I mirrored it and placed it on top, turning it into a square. Then I repeated that pattern by mirroring the square a few times and extending the sky to make a six-sided texture. This six-sided texture can basically be folded into a cube, and it's one way of creating a skybox. Looking into the corners, you can definitely see the cube's shape, but overall I think it looks pretty good. 
and it also changes the lighting in the level to make it look a bit better. To add on to this, I decided to add a bit of purple fog, so that far away objects would have a tint of purple to them, and I think this ended up looking really cool. And then I went back and added in the easy props like the signs that are placed throughout the level, and at this point all I had left to finish the level was create the level specific mechanics, like the springs, the spikes, the destructible platforms, the winged strawberries, and the moving platforms. The springs were easy enough to make. I basically just made it so that the character controller would jump when it made contact with the spring, but instead of a regular jump, it would apply a stronger force for a higher jump. Jumping on a spring will also reset Madeline's dash, and I also made it so that the spring will have a little bouncing animation after Madeline jumps off of it, and it ends in time before Madeline can fall back onto it. Next, I worked on the destructible platforms. When Madeline jumps on these, they're supposed to collapse from beneath her feet after a short period of time. Like the dash crystals, they will leave a white outline and will respawn after a few seconds. The other unique platform type is the moving platforms. These will start to move once a player touches it. It moves along the chain from one end to the other and then slowly returns. But timing your jump with the platforms will give you a boost in momentum that can make you go higher or jump farther. Up next is the winged strawberry. It works similar to the regular strawberry, except that it has wings that will cause it to fly away if you dash while in the room. I made a box trigger around this room, and if the player dashes while in this box, it'll trigger the animation for the strawberry to fly away while it laughs at you. If you're quick enough, you can still get the strawberry, even if it starts to fly away. And the final mechanic for this level is the spikes. For now, I just created a model for the spike, added an outline, and placed them all over the map. Something that I've done in all the other remakes was adding a death animation, but for some reason I kept forgetting to mention it in their respective videos. But finally I remembered to mention it in this video. When Madeline touches a spike, or lands out of bounds, she'll explode into 8 balls matching her hair color. Then a black stream passes by, and then the balls come back together to bring her back to life. I was able to replicate this by creating a couple animations for the explosion, and then combining them back together. Then I just turned off the model for Madeline, as well as the controls, and then turned it back on later. I also made sure that the 8 balls are always facing towards the camera, so that it'll always be consistent. Unfortunately, since I only did 1-1, the dash crystals aren't going to be used at all in the main game, but I'm going to leave them here in the testing area that I use, so you can try them out there. The main menu will let you pick between the main game and the testing area, as well as change some settings and view the controls. I also added a little pedestal for Madeline to chill on in the title screen. Even though it looks like a perfectly round cylinder, it's actually very distorted due to the perspective of the camera. Then I added a pause menu that you can access in-game by pressing the escape key. After adding in the sound effects and a looping music track, this game is basically finished. The last thing I added was a menu at the end of the demo for when you can win the game. It shows how fast you completed it, how many strawberries you collected, as well as how many deaths you had. And this was my fastest run. I'm going to challenge you guys to try and beat my time. I'll also upload my run on my second channel in about a week or so, so that you guys can see how I did it. And that's pretty much all I have to say about that. The link to the game will be in a Google Drive link in the description, and I promise my next video won't take 9 months, it'll take 9 years. Alright, see ya.